I got the opportunity to talk with Patrick Bed David one on one multiple times. The first was at Grow With Video Live, which is hosted by fellow YouTuber Sean Cannell. And behind the scenes backstage, fellow YouTuber and my buddy Ruslan introduced us. And during that first meeting, he gave me some really good advice, which I'll share here later in this video. But from there, after we built our relationship, I ended up going to his office about a month later to go film a podcast with him. And the thing that stuck out to me about going to his office was just the whole experience, which led to a ton of things that I learned. Right when you walk in the office, you get to see all of these pictures with him and these celebrities at his office, at events, on his podcast, and you see the scope of the amount of people that he's able to interview. It's not just business people. He's interviewing athletes, comedians, people from the mob, and it was just really cool for me to see the amount of influence and connections he has. Well, from there, you go through the rest of his office and you see this massive operation of a ton of different businesses and employees that work there at HQ. And as we were walking the office, we finally got to the meeting room where we were going to film the podcast. And as I got there, he was just finishing up a meeting with him, his wife, and some business partners. And they said that they were in there for the last few hours hammering out a bunch of things. And what I didn't know while we were finishing up the podcast was he was finishing up the sale of his insurance company for a multi nine figure payday. And I asked him, I said, Patrick, how often are you in meetings like this? Obviously, you're going to be in big meetings when you're selling your company for nine figures. But are you actually in meetings a lot these days? or what do you do with your time? And he said that he's in big meetings almost every single day across his various departments and companies. And this struck me as something I needed to actually consider because as of today, I am not a big meeting guy. In fact, I rarely have meetings. And I know I'm not the only entrepreneur like that. There are many other ones who I know that are just like me. The way I operate is I like to have the head of my companies have their meetings with their teams and everything else. Then they report what happens in that meeting to me. And if everything's good, then we're square. But if there are some problems that need to be solved and they need my feedback, then I'll give it and they'll go out and execute it. But I've always figured that if you can have an hour long meeting without me and give me the nuts and bolts in five minutes, that saves me 50 55 minutes of my time and we get the same result. But after talking to Patrick, it's made me realize that there's definitely a balance for meetings. I don't think you should be in meetings for hours and hours every single day with your company, but I also don't think you should be in no meetings at all. I think there needs to be a happy balance. And so for me in 2023, one of my goals is that I wanna have more frequent in-depth meetings with my team. Now, speaking of meetings, Patrick and I obviously had a meeting that day and we talked about a number of things. One thing that he revealed to me was that he is doubling down on media. He wants to grow his company Valuetainment to new levels. He wants to essentially be the number one media company for entrepreneurs. And to do this, he's recruiting like crazy to get better writers, get better podcasters, and he's even looking for comedians. And it got me thinking, I've been focusing a lot on building my own personal brand and social media presence. But once you do that and you reach his level, the next step is building out true media that goes beyond you. This is exactly what Gary Vee is doing with VaynerMedia. It's what Patrick is doing with Valuetainment. My buddy Dave Meltzer, who's been on my podcast, is also doing a similar thing. And what they all know is that we are a content-driven world now. Content is the future, and companies are going to pay big money to get content on their platforms. And it makes a lot of sense. Think about YouTube right now, how you're watching this video. The only reason you go to YouTube is to watch content, and so YouTube needs to recruit more talented people to create content. They give their creators half of the ad revenue that comes in the door on their videos. It's a really good proposition, right? We'll provide the platform and the traffic, you make the content, let's split the profit. Netflix is going about it in a different way. They used to have to go license all of these movies and they're paying all of this money. But then they said, you know what? Why not own our own content and create it ourselves? And so they've created a studio and they are pumping out movies and TV shows every single day. And this is why Disney has been such a powerhouse for decades. Their catalog of IP is so enormous that they've got content forever. And it's also why I created my newest company, Content Empire, to help entrepreneurs figure out how to create content to drive traffic to their business. But even knowing all that, you still have to kind of be reminded sometimes. For me, I know content is king, but seeing what he's doing made me wanna double down even more on creating content for myself and for my businesses. The competition for attention is gonna to continue to grow. And to stay relevant, you've gotta to continue to innovate and reinvent yourself as time goes on. 
which is actually the third thing that I learned from Patrick. In our first meeting at Growth Video Live, we talked backstage for 15 minutes. And he told me straight up, he said, Ryan, you need to take a break and reinvent yourself. He said over the years as he was building up his Valuetainment social media channel, he always took breaks at each kind of milestone he set. He might've took a break at 250,000 subscribers, then another break at a million and so forth. And it was during those breaks that he was able to have meetings and brainstorm and come back stronger than ever. And it's absolutely necessary to reach the next milestone. All the content I've put out to this point to get to over 250,000 subscribers isn't the same stuff I'm gonna have to do to get to a million. And it was because of his advice that I started creating weekly vlogs. For me, it was an attempt at reinventing myself, but also taking a break. The cool thing about the vlogs is they took no effort from me because it was just filming what I was doing anyway. Whereas with a video like this, I gotta write out a good script, I gotta take the time dedicated to filming this, vlogs were much easier and way more efficient. Along with that, we started reposting clips from my podcast channel, and essentially, my main channel, which you're watching right now, was on autopilot. I wasn't having to do any work to create any videos. So in essence, I was taking a break while reinventing myself. The only problem was my channel didn't perform very well for the last couple of months doing that. There wasn't clear purpose behind the videos being put out and the numbers reflected that. The viewers want to see content that is very intentional. So even though that kind of set me back and it messed up our algorithm and everything like that, I am happy I did it because it led to two realizations. For one, I know that approach won't work, so I therefore won't do that again. And two, it did give me the break he was talking about. That break allowed me to focus on my businesses and take a reset. And now I'm ready for this next phase of content where I'm reinventing myself and focusing on the goal of getting to a million subscribers. You're gonna see content like this where I share exclusive lessons that I've learned from famous people. I'll be putting out more real estate videos. I think I kinda got away from that and I want to help people people get into real estate investing and grow their business. And you're gonna see more entrepreneur and finance videos to help you make more money. And with all of these videos, they're gonna be far more entertaining with the edits and the information. So if you like where we're headed, definitely comment below so we can help the algorithm get re-going again. But back to what I learned from Patrick. So another thing that stuck out to me was how risk averse he is. If you look on his page, so many of his videos are about how things are crashing, how there's a big recession, how the housing market's gonna tank. And on my podcast, we talked about the real estate market and how he thinks that it is gonna go down, down, down. And for me, it's easy to discuss and say, well, you know what? Patrick's an insurance guy and all insurance guys are very risk averse by their profession. If house flippers are on one side of the risk spectrum because we are willing to take big risk, insurance guys are definitely on the other end of the spectrum where they're trying to avoid loss. But I will say talking to him made me reanalyze whether or not I was being too risky. Even if I have high conviction in an investment, a business, or a decision, I should still have some kind of hedge at this point in my career. Mainly because as you accumulate more, you have far more to lose versus when you're starting out and you have nothing to lose, you can take more risk. So when it comes to real estate investing, instead of trying to go and flip every home and maximize all the profits, I should hedge and start to wholesale some so that I have a good mix. Overall, I think I could have better balance and be smarter with how I go all in on decisions. The fifth thing that stuck out to me from Patrick that I learned is that I need to improve my communication skills. Now look, I think I'm a pretty good communicator, but you talk to Patrick and this guy is a master of communication. And I'm not just saying this because he gassed me up on the Think Media podcast recently. Ryan was there, just a, what a great guy he is. Him and his wife, good looking guy, could be a model by the way. But the way he tells stories is unparalleled. I've seen him do it time and time again on his videos. I mentioned before how he's related to so many different types of famous people. Doesn't matter if it's an athlete, a politician, someone in the mob, a YouTuber, he can talk to all of them. And even just his body language and how he communicates with you in person. Whenever he wants to communicate something intimate, he puts his hand on your shoulder. All of these things make for a great communicator and great communicators become great leaders. And great leaders make the people around them feel valued and produce even better. And I can assure you he is like this both on camera and off camera. So work on your communication skills because it's probably the most important skill you can learn in business and life. So thank you, Patrick, for showing me that.